Maria, I need to talk to you about something important. I'm convinced that jihad is the answer to defending our faith. Jihad, but isn't that just a holy war full of violence and bloodshed? Yes it may seem that way from the outside, but jihad is much more than that. The Quran teaches us that jihad is an effort to preserve our faith and confront the temptations of evil. It even tells us that jihad can mean striving to be faithful to the commandments of God and achieving goals in life. I understand, but I've also read that in the Quran, violence should be understood as a show of strength to avoid confrontation, not as aggression. Don't you think there's another kind of jihad, one that promotes Islam peacefully and extends its teachings to other communities? You're right, Maria. Jihad often carries misconceptions, but it extends far beyond armed struggle. It encompasses the striving for a virtuous life, promoting Islamic teachings peacefully, and defending against aggression. Islamic scholars have emphasized that positive contributions to Islam don't necessitate violence. Spreading Islam through peaceful means and resisting oppression are both considered forms of jihad. What about those who say Islam is spread by sword? This is a misconception. The Quran states, let there be no compulsion in religion, truth stands out clear from error. Present realities and historical evidence dispel this misconception, there are 14 million Coptic Christians in the Arab world who have maintained their faith for generations. Muslims ruled Spain for 800 years without forceful conversions. Islam has spread to many regions without military force, like Indonesia, Malaysia, and East Africa. Indonesia, the world's most populous Muslim nation, is a historical example of this spread. Muslim merchants introduced Islam gradually through trade, exemplifying Islamic values through business practices. I see. So jihad is a struggle or effort to live out the Muslim faith as well as possible and it's more about defending the faith against those who seek to distort it or prevent its practice rather than aggression or violence. This reminds me of some passages in the Old Testament where there's a focus on defending faith and combating evil. For example, in Deuteronomy 17 verses 2 to 5 it describes the punishment for those who engage in idolatry, a serious offense against the covenant with God. And in 1 Samuel 15 verse 3, there's a command from God to utterly destroy the Amalekites, reflecting divine judgment against a nation considered hostile and wicked. But at the same time, like the Quran, it has to do with the truth of the beliefs and the worshipping on the one and only God of each religion. I see what you mean. So just like in the Quran, there's an emphasis on defending faith and combating evil in the Old Testament. This reminds me of what Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said upon returning from battle, we return from the lesser jihad to the greater jihad. The greater jihad refers to the more challenging and significant struggle against one's ego, selfishness, greed, and inner evils. Similarly, the New Testament teaches that the true spiritual battle is not against people. Both the Quran and the Old Testament emphasize the importance of standing firm in one's faith and resisting oppression, whether through peaceful means or, if necessary, through defensive measures. It's fascinating to see how similar themes are echoed in different religious texts, isn't it? It really highlights the universal values of justice, righteousness, and faith. You know Maria, our discussion today has really opened my eyes to the deeper meanings within our religious texts. I'm glad to hear that, Ahmed. It's essential to understand the context and interpretations behind these verses, especially in today's world where misunderstandings can lead to conflict and division. You're absolutely right. In today's society, we must promote the critical interpretations of these texts ensuring they are understood within their full historical, cultural, and literary contexts, rather than in isolation. Yes, we must stand together to ensure that these sacred texts are not misused to promote violence or discrimination. Instead, let's focus on promoting love, respect, and unity among all people, regardless of their religious beliefs. This aligns with the URI preamble, which states, we unite to build cultures of peace and justice. Just as the URI promotes interfaith cooperation, fostering understanding between different religions can contribute to creating a more peaceful and just world.